Fedora decided to make a massive change to their distro, dropping the Mesa encode and decode support for H.264, H.265, and the decode for VC1. So I originally heard about this over on the Fedora mailing list. And basically what this means, for the GPUs that rely on Mesa for this video codec support, basically they won't be GPU accelerated. Now, considering the general lack of explanation outside of the mailing list on Fedora's part, you might want to go and blame Fedora. However, they're not really the ones at fault here. But back to the main issue. These codecs are far less important than they used to be maybe 5 or 10 years ago. VP8, VP9, and AV1 are all open and royalty-free codecs. Basically, anybody can freely use them and in many cases have basically taken over the use of things like H.264. H.265 to a lesser extent, because that just wasn't being used anywhere near as much as when these codecs were starting to come out. Especially when talking about web use, where YouTube, for example, uses a mix of VP9 and AV1. Partially because Google developed these, but that's what they use. However, they also do use H.264 on the streamer side. So when I stream to YouTube or I stream to Twitch, I stream in the H.264 codec. And many applications out there still rely on H.264 and H.265. Obviously OBS being one of them, but also things like Parsec. Various online video conferencing services like Zoom for example. Video players trying to play back video with this codec. Video editors trying to export video in this codec, and various other video related operations. A lot of websites, for example, that aren't YouTube may stream their video encoded in the H.264 codec. Now, this issue primarily affects AMD. AMD is the only one that relies on Mesa for this video codec support. In Intel's case, they have a separate driver package called the Intel Media Driver, and for NVIDIA, their proprietary drivers include these codecs. And as you probably expected, Reddit wasn't exactly happy about these changes with a post on r slash Fedora and r slash Linux with various follow-up posts about various different aspects of this change. The main issue here is sort of the, the lack of explanation about what's going on. It seemed like this weird hostile user change for basically no reason. I would have expected some sort of official statement from Fedora explaining, you know, why they did this. However, from my understanding, this in and of itself is also kind of an issue legally, as depending on what they say, these statements could be used against them. So to understand what's going on here, we need to step back a little bit, all the way back to April. Mesa can now be built with select video codecs disabled for software pattern concerns, with this change made by Dave, I want to say it's Early, but it could be Ali. If you see this video, please tell me how to pronounce your name. This allows you to turn on slash off all hardware implementations for a specific video codec across the tree. Pattern encumbered codecs can cause problems for distributions due to the nature of at least MPEG LA licensing. This blog post right here is probably the best explanation I can find. From a distro point of view, Codec fees are a jigsaw puzzle that only seem to become a problem when you fit all the pieces. This patch will allow disabling the Mesa piece of the puzzle. But to the regular everyday Linux user, this change didn't really make that much sense. Sure, you can go and disable it for the patent issues, but why would you want to disable an expected feature of a modern distro? So this really didn't get that much attention and kind of got swept under the rug and everybody forgot it happened. So here's the main issue. Like many issues in the FOSS world, this is an issue where the US patent law strikes again. Firstly, not a lawyer. But the way that I basically understand it is that the MPEG Licensing Administration, otherwise known as MPEG-LA, based in Colorado, is the owner of the patent for H.264, H.265, VC1, and various other video and audio related codecs that don't really matter for today. And these codecs are not 
royalty-free codex. So if you're building a GPU that has a hardware decoder and encoder, if you're building a operating system that supports these codecs, if you're, say, building a piece of user software that supports doing whatever it is with these codecs, licensing fees must be paid for. And by including these codecs in, say, an operating system like in Fedora's case, and then distributing this codec support, you are in violation of MPEG LA's patents and Red Hat, also a US-based company based in North Carolina, would be opening themselves up to potential patent trolling. If MPEG LA wanted to, they could go to Red Hat and say, hey, you have been distributing Mesa with this codec support, you must pay the licensing fees for the users that are making use of this. And that would potentially be a lot of money. Even if it's not a lot of money, Red Hat doesn't exactly want to pay that. So to the best of my knowledge, talking to fairly important people at Red Hat, it doesn't seem like they've received any sort of, you know, cease and desist letter or anything like that. This seems to be more of a preemptive decision to bring Fedora back in line with their general patent policy. This is what Dave Ali said on Twitter. It's bringing Fedora back in line with our pre-existing understanding of the problem space to avoid possible future problems in that space along with a more roundabout way of saying the same thing by Matthew Miller. In Boston, it's illegal for restaurants to allow dogs on patios, even outdoors. It's only sporadically enforced, but fines do come down. Most restaurants ignore this. The ones that don't get yelled at by angry customers. Please don't yell at the restaurant. Fix the stupid law. Basically saying that we are now complying with the law. In case you don't know, this is literally the Fedora project leader. Now you may be thinking, well, what about other distros that either have a corporate element or are backed by a corporation like, say, Ubuntu with Canonical or OpenSUSE with, well, SUSE? Well, in Canonical's case, they are based in the UK and SUSE is based in Germany. And this is where things get really weird with US patent law. Basically, US patent law only really matters in the US. And when you start going to places like Europe, they don't really care about it. If you want to go and protect your software in those regions, you need to go and patent it again in Europe. But there's an issue. As a general rule, software is not patentable in Europe. There are certainly exceptions, but this seems to be the way it is typically handled. But what about the distros that aren't corporate distros, say Arch, Gentoo, Void, Slackware, or even things like Debian, let alone the countless number of distro forks spread out all across the world, many of which might be in the US, many of them are definitely not. Because these aren't corporate entities, they aren't really viable or valuable targets to go against with patent trolling, even if they are based in the US. Whereas Red Hat, Red Hat is this big, successful company. If you want to go and patent troll someone, Red Hat's a pretty good target. Well, what about System76, the owners of PopOS, and based in Colorado? To the best of my knowledge, they would be under the same legal obligations as Fedora. But from what I've seen, they either don't really care about the problem, or maybe don't know about the presumably they know about the problem presumably a company like system 76 has at least one software lawyer in their staff but they don't consider this an issue one thing you may have in your head is don't hardware vendors pay for your patent license if that is the case shouldn't you by buying a gpu have the right to make use of these codex well the answer to that is kind of yes and no so there is this incredible write-up called Settle Your Questions About H.264 License Cost Once and For All, Hopefully. The TLDR is H.264 licensing basically requires a full chain of licenses. So if you buy a GPU, and this includes an H.264 license, then this covers the GPU. It doesn't cover your operating system. It doesn't cover the software running on the operating system, like your browser, your video player, your video recorder, or anything else like that. It just covers the GPU. And this is assuming you have that patent license in the first place. If you buy a GPU, it may not have that license. You would assume that Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, because they designed the system, they would pay the license. Well, they don't have to. They could actually pass that over to the add-in board partner, and then they could decide they don't want to pay it, and then pass that over to the OEM system builder, 
and then they may not pay that. And then it gets passed further and further down the line, nobody actually paying the license. So unless you've specifically read the licensing documentation for your hardware, you cannot even say if you have that hardware license in the first place. And being a monetarily free piece of software, a monetarily free operating system, does not protect you from having to pay this license fee. There are also issues with the distribution of H.264 video as well, but that's not really relevant today. If you take anything away from what I just said, H.264 licensing is a nightmare. But... Obviously, dropping this support from Mesa isn't a great solution for the user. The user expects that feature to be there, even if out of the box it is not being used by any user space software and is being used by things you download later down the line. And the solution to this is tax evasion. I mean, patent evasion. So the most probable solution that Dave Varley is working on is shipping a separate package that includes this codec support inside of RPM Fusion. I'm fixing the packages to allow the possibility of a Mesa VARP drivers free world being built by RPM Fusion. Hopefully that happens. And looking over the various issue discussion and mailing list discussion, this seems to be the direction that everything is going. So RPM Fusion, from my understanding, is hosted in France. I might be wrong there. I know it is hosted somewhere in Europe. And as I said earlier, US software patterns don't exactly apply in Europe. So if you distribute the software from Europe, the US patent law doesn't apply. I'm not a lawyer. Ask a lawyer to make sure everything's clear here. But if that's exactly how it works, this is how broken US patent law is. You just distribute it somewhere else. Doesn't matter if you're a US-based company. Just circumvent it. It's fine. It's not even as difficult as using a tax haven. And RPM Fusion is not enabled by default. So when you install Fedora, or on an existing Fedora system, you would enable RPM Fusion, you can download the extra codecs, and everything just goes back to working pretty much like it should. It's an extra step you need to take, and it's an extra step that someone new to Fedora is going to have to know about to make sure, you know, that they don't start reporting a bunch of bugs for every piece of software they use, but it can still be addressed. Now, I want to make something very clear. Fedora is almost certainly in the right by making this decision, by dropping the support from the Mesa package they ship normally with their distro. It's ensuring that an issue doesn't occur somewhere in the future. But even so, it is a giant L for the distro, because no other distros are going to make this change. Also, if it's known the RPM Fusion solution would have worked, it should have been done for making the change to Mesa. If you haven't received a cease and desist letter, it's not like you're on a very tight timer to make sure this is done. It should have been done in a slower fashion, make sure everything's, you know, good for the user, and then make the change, and there probably wouldn't have been that much drama about it. Sure, some people will complain they have to install an extra package, but in the end, everything will be dealt with before it even started. And can I just say how weird it is that this weeb who sits in his bedroom, where you can see my pile of clothes back there, like that basket in the background, that's my washing. Someone like me is not taking this seriously in any capacity, is having important people like Dave Arley, a distinguished Red Hat engineer, the one who actually made this change, and Matthew Miller, the Fedora project lead, replying to what I'm saying on Twitter. What I say on Twitter shouldn't be that important, but... Apparently it is. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a Fedora user? Is this issue going to affect you? Or are you just, you know, excited that right now is a really fun time to be a Linux hobbyist where lots of things are changing, lots of things are breaking, and everything crazy is going on? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, to the only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me and...